Hi friends! Today we're going to do a book bracket challenge. This one is not nearly as pretty as the one that I made for next year's bullet journal. Uh, this one I just kind of threw together the other day so that we could work on it together. I did a similar thing so if you didn't watch that video basically what I did was I took the most popular book or the most favorite book from every month which doesn't necessarily mean it's my 12 most favorite books of the year just the most favorite of each month uh highest rated of each month let's go with that and then because I like things to be even and I like things to like continue on forever I also had four extras so that everybody had like an even shot of getting there uh, two against two all the way through because uh, if you only have these then you have to have like three against three or whatever like there's a thing so I took four extra so that I could then have my top four favorites that weren't a favorite of the month we're just rolling with it okay so let's talk about what we got here first um these are the months and then either the numbers or whatever on the side. January, the highest rated book was Rules for Vampires, but it was like a three star. So, you know, February was Love at First Spite. March was Not the Witch You Wed. April, So This Is Ever After. May was Witchlings. June is Legends and Lattes. July is The House Sitter. August is These Fleeting Shadows. September is a beautifully foolish, a beautifully foolish endeavor. October is the glass witch. November is glass heart and December is all our hidden gifts. Our four extras are a prophecy and ash, uh, stay awake, the luminaries and book lovers. I did a random, I technically use the same randomization that I used for next year's because um, I didn't feel like doing it again, but uh, you know, we're just gonna roll with it. I randomized them. So it was like a randomization head head to head battle here. Let's do some of the easy ones first. Let's do January's Rules for Vampires versus Not the Witch You Wed for March. As stated, Rules for Vampires didn't love. So Not the Witch You Wed goes here. That's an easy win. This one, uh, sorry, Julie, I love you, but uh, Kate Alice Marshall wins out. I'm sure you can agree with that. Uh, book Lovers over Beautifully Foolish Endeavor, for sure. Um, book Lovers has become one of my favorite books of all time. This one's a little harder. House Sitter versus The Luminaries. I really love The House Sitter, but I am a Susan Dinner stand, so Luminaries it is. You'll notice I skipped one over here because I don't know what I'm going to do with that one yet. Um, these Fleeting Shadows easily over... Love at first spite. Love at first spite was okay, but it wasn't the best thing ever. The glass witch versus stay awake. See, that one's hard because I really liked the glass witch, but I really like stay awake. <laughs> Let's do an easier one. Um, I loved, so this is ever after. This was probably one of my other highest rated, but witch lanes. Witch lanes is my only perfect rated book of the year. So the likelihood that this up here ends up being witch lanes is pretty high, but there's, there's still time. I know I really need to get to all our hidden gifts and legends and lattes. Okay. So as much as I loved legends and lattes, because it was fantastic, everyone is absolutely right. It's worth the hype, especially the audiobook. It is read by the author who was originally an audiobook narrator. Very good. But all our hidden gifts, I have not heard anybody talk about. I just read it and it was fan fucking tastic. And I just bought the sequel. Um, so I'm going to do all our hidden gifts because it was fantastic. The glass witch or stay awake. The glass witch or stay awake. I don't know. This is hard. This is probably the hardest one because they were both really, really good. And like for very different reasons, the glass witch is mid grade and was fun and kooky and spooky and stay awake was creepy and had twists it's adult mystery thriller my gut says the glass witch i'm not even looking at that one right now um okay all our hidden gifts are not the witch you wed easy all our hidden gifts as much as i love not the witch you wed fantastic series love it i should say fantastic book because i haven't read book two yet i have the arc but 
Haven't read it. Ooh. Ooh. Life is getting hard. Okay. Um, book Lovers and Glass Heart. As much as I really like Glass Heart, I'm going to go with Book Lovers. I know that's a controversial opinion for myself. Glass Heart was not my favorite of the trilogy. It just happens to be the favorite of that month and how it ended up on the, the chart. That's why these charts are weird because it's not really like, it's really not even your favorite book of the year. It's just based off of very, it, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a mess. Anyway, book lovers, that's what we're going with. The luminaries versus these fleeting shadows. Okay. So these fleeting shadows, Kate Alice Marshall is a queen and I love her. Her books are fucking creepy. And these fleeting shadows gave me the absolute fucking creeps. Again, if you are interested in that one, definitely highly recommend the audiobook because they actually like there's um like ghosts kind of in the book and they have like voices and they're described in the book as being like echoey or gravelly or you know like having these weird effects to them and they put those effects in the in the audiobook so like you actually hear like the clicking in their voice or the growl in their voice and it is fucking creepy and then the luminaries is susan and i love Suze and i love i love Suze and i love the luminaries it was very good but I think I'm gonna have to go with these fleeting shadows. Don't come at me, Suze. I'm sorry. I know you're like my favorite author, but Kate Alice Marshall, man, that that book is creepy. It's fucking creepy. And then Witchlings in the Glass Witch. Uh, love you, Lindsay, but going with Witchlings because favorite mid grade of the year. I have problems, and uh, they are okay. This side super easy. Book lovers or all our hidden gifts easy. All our hidden gifts. You didn't think she was gonna get here, did you? but she did because I bet if you're watching this of every book that's on here the one you have never heard of other than rules for vampires because it's a mid-grade that didn't do very well the one you probably haven't heard of is all our hidden gifts and she's clear up here I'm gonna go I I am I gonna do it I think I'm gonna do it this is like I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm going to do with myself here. My decisions are Witchlings versus these fleeting shadows. Again, Witchlings was an absolute perfect mid-grade. Now, does that mean that it's a perfect book or that it's my favorite book? Like, it's the highest rated thing. It's the only thing that got a perfect score. It was fan-fucking-tastic. I loved every minute of it. But is it my favorite over these fleeting shadows, which I also fucking loved every minute of? and was creeped out. I'm really struggling with this one. I'm going to go with my gut. My gut says Witchlings because again, it was like the perfect mid grade. And then we get to All Our Hidden Gifts or Witchlings, which was my favorite book of the year. So again, Witchlings was like a 5.25. All Our Hidden Gifts was a 4.75. Mostly it didn't make me cry. So that didn't get a cry bonus, which Witchlings got. And I don't remember what the other ding was on it. I could look it up where's the fun in that so I checked so all our hidden gifts did not get a cry bonus which is why it's not a perfect score it also only got a four on characters and a four on logic which makes sense because it's a book about fucking magic character wise it was that I didn't feel like we had enough characters that like I really loved I mean the characters that were there were fantastic they were super well done um, but I wanted like some more backstory on some of the other characters, which I guess to be fair, it is the first in a series. So who knows? So when it comes down to it, if I'm looking at these two books, Witchlings is, does have a lot of important topics as far as like dealing with um, people who are kind of placed on the outside of things and um, learning to trust uh, people who are like trying to help you trying to do things. Uh, it's, it's about, you know, kids finding their voices. Uh, All Our Hidden Gifts deals a lot with homophobia, racism, some really serious, heavy topics wrapped in this creepy ass tarot card related murder crazy woman. I just, I have to go with All Our Hidden Gifts. I have to. I can't, I can't not. I don't, I feel like it would be disingenuous to even though which lanes again perfect mid-grade i feel like all our hidden gifts was so good and really 
spoke to me and really, I mean, yes, which leans did as well. These two are very, both very, very good. I think probably if I had read them at the opposite times, I probably would feel more strongly about Witchlings than I do about All Our Hidden Gifts. But I just read All Our Hidden Gifts this month. That's what I'm going to go with. That's what I'm going with. It's up here in this box. That's our winner. Phone home, call your friends. All Our Hidden Gifts by Caroline O'Donohue. I will link my reviews for all of these books um, that won their categories in the description box down below for you if you want to check them out. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.